selenites, minerals, and compounds. Crystal Healing Higher Vibration. Yeah, that's going to be in the title because if you were looking that up, you'll immediately hit the back button and go back to what you were looking for because you're not going to hear what you want. You can have selenites and selenides and selenates uh, that are based on sodium, which is the one that you probably may or may not have known you were looking up if you were looking up crystal healing BS. Or they could be based on barium or zinc. Zinc, relatively safe. Or is it? Barium, believe it or not, is safe, except that chemtrailers will say, depending on what they're talking about, it's safe or unsafe. Therefore, acknowledging that depending on what you do with that element, barium, it is or is not safe. It's not just the pure element you're talking about. It's what it's in. <clears throat> you can react selenium dioxide. That's the part that makes it a selenate crystal. It's selenium atoms. Uh, with sodium hydroxide to make sodium selenate. These can be reacted in an empty chamber inside of a cooling a geode-like space somewhere in Mexico and make giant crystals. It's mainly used in the making of colorless glass. The crystal is added in, it melts with uh, other silicates, and you end up with glass, float glass, or other types. Human, pet, and livestock diet supplements include, include selenium compounds, not, just, not necessarily sodium selenate, um, <clears throat> Uh, because it's an essential nutrient or an essential mineral. Activity of antioxidant enzymes is listed vaguely on the Wikipedia article. You can find it easily, if you want to talk about this end of it, in eggs, Brazil nuts, seafood, meats, and organs of animals that are consumed as food, grains, and dairy products. So Brazil nuts, eggs, and milk products are where I would get mine. The very tiny amount you need every day can also come from plants in general or anything else grown in soil that has enough selenium compounds. Again, depending on if it's a pure or compounded thing, it's either safe or unsafe, and you'd have to look up the details. If you are a person with intestinal tract damage or you're eating a diet that doesn't contain foods that were grown in selenium-rich soil, you might have all sorts of, con con all sorts of conditions, including Cash and Beck disease. These are things you'd have to go to a hospital and a doctor to get diagnosed for, not I read up on it and I did my research on the internet. I did my own research. is not a good excuse for killing yourself by accident. <clears throat> because you should avoid excess exposure. The adult tolerable exposure intake maximum for medical purposes under medical supervision is 0.3 milligrams. Look up what a milligram of any material is, just how tiny it is. It's toxic at three milligrams, but at 0.3 milligrams is the maximum you're supposed to take for a medical reason and lower than that for just general exposure. Per day. Three milligrams a day will eventually kill you dead or in a doorknob. See also Philip, I can't pronounce it, and Fiona Stewart's book, Peaceful Pill Handbook. On page 192, in a list of suicide agent materials for euthanizing the aged and infirm. I could say it nicer than that, but I don't because... You'd have to read the book and, more importantly, look up these individuals and the movement. <clears throat> but Wabtec, this is about our chakras and maracas and uh, and our uh, our uh, our vibration and wavelengths. And uh... okay, here's a simple thought experiment: when someone who has no medical knowledge and won't tell you what they're talking about when they say high vibration or whatever. <clears throat> gives you advice versus me saying you'd have to look up what individual compound you're coming in contact with. A, I'm telling you find out what the compound is in that crystal before you're exposed to it. Because a very minor, seeming minor change, like a temperature range or a pressure level, can cause something lethal to be sitting on your shelf as some sort of healing crystal. See also in India, people talking about 
Mercury being safe if it's made room temperature solid when they're talking about gallium and, and other materials that aren't mercury. But people who believe the lie they're told by some person claiming to have done some sort of miracle as a guru will go find mercury and try to do the same thing to prove themselves worthy in some spiritual way and give themselves and their family mercury poisoning because mercury is poisonous and every single person in India and every other country that talks about those silver blobs of mushy material are lying about what's in it. Mercury is lethal. Shut up. Yeah, but no. These The kind of people that you see on the internet that complain about, well, it's okay because we have to understand their culture, will immediately complain that mercury fillings are lethal and deadly and it's all part of conspiracy of some sort versus gurus who literally lie to you about how safe mercury is. And they're in on it. And they make money off of it. And it's literally a conspiracy that's absolutely been proven. All you have to do is appeal to someone's biases and you can get away with quite literal murder. Now let's talk about your Healing Crystal local rock shop. Every rock shop I visited, I simply, I literally held up a sign. If you say higher vibration without specifying what you're talking about, I'm immediately going to help have a bunch of people pick at this location until you put up the right sign. And then I hand them a sign. We do not make medical claims. There is no such thing as higher vibration. All of the woo peddling is missing from this, this store or business. And in Portland, Oregon, as you might imagine it, me being a flaming liberal, going after what was seen at the time to be cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs liberalism, did not win me any friends, except for people who were tired of someone selling something that wasn't checked to see if it was literally lead crystals. There's a lead sugar you can make or find as a mineral, and it will give you lead poisoning, and it tastes sweet, and your cat or dog licks it and dies from horrible, horrible lead poisoning. So every rock shop got told, unless you chemically identify everything with the crystal structure on it and have it tested from a reputable source so that we know we're not bringing in one of the poisonous versions of selenium, for instance. You're, you're not allowed to stop being hounded. And I e-picketed them. This is a long time ago. Why? They deserved it. They suddenly went on in the net and found everybody on every social media site, we call them now, that back then we didn't call them social media sites, finding out that the place did not double check whether they were selling you something deadly. And you might still find that sign that me and the others created. We even tintyped them sometimes <clears throat> using an Okadata printer that would smack sheet metal into a printout and then hang it up in a wall instead of using it for a printing plate. You might find some of these rock shops with an old sign that's just hard to read that says, we don't sell stuff that will hurt you. And if we don't know if it's safe, we won't sell it. And you shouldn't buy it. Meanwhile, when I grew up, we would get quartz crystals from people who were doing mining. You can make more money selling quartz crystal than trying to find gold in your mine, so just sell the quartz crystal. It's what you do as a stipend. The government only says you have to mine 100 pounds of rocks per year. They didn't say it had to be... It can be just literally rocks, but if it's quartz crystal, you know, okay, yeah, uh, Earth Smother type New Agers wanted quartz crystals. I was one of the cleavers. I could separate them apart. Yeah, leave it to cleaver. Um, but I would split them. And did you know that th these are silicates? Um, <clears throat> there's a ridiculous high likelihood of silicosis or lung damage from them. Didn't get any. I wore a mask. Why are you wearing safety equipment? Because I'm not an idiot. Well, that means it's dangerous. After it's cleaved and cleaned? No, because I clean them. You're not supposed to do that. It's supposed to be natural. That's why you wanted the really skinny crystals that are almost impossible to find versus me separating them from bundles and then grinding them at the right angle so they'd look like a, uh, you know, um, an Egyptian pillar spire. <clears throat> that was my specialty. And I would run them on a grinder. A proper one. It's really expensive, but you can make one out of the ground-up sugar quartz to grind them. My specialty was splitting sugar quartz without actually breaking it. Normally when you get it, people hit it with a hammer and break it loose from the base. You're supposed to cut them and cleave them. I was the source for some of the crystals you might have seen when you were younger from Eastern Oregon. Me and hundreds of other people did this. It was a great way to make money. Almost as fun as walking around during wintertime with Bigfoot feet, 
making sure the tourists saw something interesting. <clears throat> I never personally sold any of these in person, but I also made sure that if they were sold anywhere, they were told, yeah, these are crystals. Well, what are they good for? They're just crystals. If they ever said any kind of claim, we wouldn't sell them any more crystals. You will not screw over the buyers of these products. Well, I have cancer. Go to a doctor. And on that note, um, sodium selenate, by the way, did you know that that was the crystal you got? Or were they leaving out the sodium part so that maybe it's zinc, barium, or other? Maybe poisonous? <clears throat> None of these cure cancer. They don't raise your vibration. They don't do anything. Raise your vibration doesn't mean anything. Is it your vibration wavelength or frequency? They're polar opposites of each other. You know that, right? Does it raise the energy level? What are you talking about? Well, uh, you have to just believe. No, that's not how it works. Any claim that requires the believer to believe means that it's non-falsifiable. That's a nice technical way of saying no one has to prove their point because they're not making one. If you make a statement that doesn't require that you show proof, you haven't made a statement or an assertion. You're just full of it. Anyway, mineral nutrient, <clears throat> otherwise known as trace minerals or whatever, valuable, useful, etc. And if it's bioeffective, it can be biotoxic and bioaccumulative and dangerous. Oh, it's completely innocuous. The only things that are completely innocuous don't do anything for or against you. They're inert. Inert materials have no effect. Claiming they have an effect while claiming they have no effect is an oxymoronic statement. 0.3 milligrams or 300 micrograms, some say four, let's do 300, is bordering on toxic in some cases. But it's a maximum you should do under medical supervision. Three milligrams per day. Look how little you'd have to be exposed to. Now let's talk about safe mode crystals. Quartz crystals, while they're virtually the safest thing I can think of to give away as a, as a present, you should still varnish them. When I gave them out early, I noticed that the bases of them, especially if they were pure, pure, clear quartz, going down to a sugar quartz base, which was pretty common, um, we would dunk them in something that would make them seal up. People say, well, I don't want that. But they would mount, you know, silver or junk silver uh, caps on them and make jewelry out of them. I said, I don't want them breaking off any crystals. They'll get into your lungs. Uh, and the, trying to argue with some teenager, or in my case, a at the time, also later on when I was in my early 20s, <clears throat> telling me, I don't care if you're trying to save my life. I don't do that. That isn't going to fly. So I said, I don't want you getting silicosis from pieces of quartz crystal getting in your lungs or someone else or your pet. Suddenly, it, it, this is funny, if you bring up their kid, they may not care, but if you bring up their pet, they suddenly are very safety oriented. Again, I have a problem mostly with liberals at the time because liberals were most notorious for this shit. Now it's the other way around for some reason. So I just look like a bad liberal pissing all over conservatives. But that's the group right now that's doing the least amount of sensibility. But anyway, if you're one of these people who believes in high, higher vibrations and crystal healing, that's fine. Coat your crystals. I'm not kidding. A clear coat. Get really good quality, hard acrylic coatings put on them. Put them on in incredibly thin layers. Several of them. They'll make them iridescent a little bit but they will chemically isolate you from whatever the crystal's made out of. Again, is it made of zinc, barium, or sodium selenate? Or is it a selenate? Or a selenide? These are complicated things to look up, and even more complicated to test. So if you don't want to test them, especially if you're selling them, coat them for protection and safety. The claim that every one of these people makes is simply being in the presence of these things, exposed to energies, quote-unquote, which of course is vague and non-falsifiable is healing crystal stuff. That's fine. That means you don't have to have exposure to air. Next, I want to point out that some of these things come from the ground, are wrenched from the core of the earth. And as soon as they're exposed to air, they start chemically reacting and turning into something else. And putting it in a neutral material, like an argon atmosphere, or just coating them with clear coat, hell, if you get it right, uh, you can coat them with super glue. You can find something to coat them with. It makes it to where they're not dangerous. So if you bought these or are selling them, coating them doesn't hurt anything. Please don't say that it does. And don't be a, a militant purist that says, I'd rather be exposed to something that will kill me and my friends and my family and my dog and cat versus ever being told to do something. You can't tell me to do that. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm telling you you should have a massive amount of guilt if you accidentally expose yourself to something 
that's toxic to you, your pet, or your kid. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck.